Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. I'm going to talk about two things that pretty much everybody says don't go together, and that's retail arbitrage and collectibles. And I, I hear people tell me it's crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. It can't be done. I can tell you for sure there are things that you can RA in the collectibles field left and right. There's just a ton of areas that you can do these in. Um, they're not stuff that the average person is going to think about or know. If you're in collectibles, it's something that you can obviously know or and that you thought about in the past. You can RA collectibles. You can RA like autographed signatures, autographed comics, trade cards, pins, buttons, uh, coins, posters, trade cards, action figures. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you can RA that are collectibles. You just have to know, um, you know some of the ins and outs of it. For me, I worked for Disney for a long time, and Disney issued out collectibles to cast members and exclusive ones just at the theme parks, which is where I worked for 10 plus years, actually. So I do have a pension from Disney and the whole works. But the point of it is that when I worked there, we could constantly get collectibles that were, you know, on clearance or they were blown out or that were only issued at like one event or something like that. We had calendars of events just like this that we set up. We followed and tracked them so we knew when to go somewhere, like autograph books and things like that. If you knew how to do it, you could score a ton of money from all the collectible aspect of it as well. A good example of that is when we worked at Disney, Anne Rice came uh, and actually signed autographs at White's Books, which was part of the Disney Village Marketplace at the time. And you had to get tickets to get in um, and actually be in line and, and such forth. And we were able to get ourselves in there to get a whole bunch of different tickets to actually get a ton of different uh, signed editions of her book. But in that case, we got multiple copies of the book at you know the, the list price. Um, the tickets were free because of where we worked, so we didn't have to pay to get a ticket. You had to wait in line, but in five hours worth of waiting in line, we got 17 copies of that book. Um, so we had 20 some odd dollars invested into the books. We were selling them for 150 straight, left and right, left and right, left and right, until they were all gone, which took about a week to sell all the copies that we had. So in that week time, we made you know almost two grand from a collectible that we were able to sell. So another example were some of the Disney posters and prints. Now I know this is going to Disney specifically uh, right this second, but you can do this anywhere. Zoos have things, concerts, promotions, parks of any kind, um, NASA, uh, collector societies. I mean, there's a ton of just these type of things out there, and, and they do them all over the place. A good example of this is a Halloween Horror trade card set of four cards, I think maybe five, that Universal Studios released for Halloween for trick-or-treaters. And it wasn't just Universal. It was released across the country um, at several uh, locations in every city that you could get these at. And we were lucky enough to find out about it um, ahead of time. We got a ton of cases of these materials, so we were buying the cases for a real reasonable price, wholesale, mind you. And then from there, we could sell them at seven to ten bucks a set. We sold uh, hundreds of these sets. I mean, literally, we sold cases of these things on eBay back in the day. So this is just another good example of these type of items. Um, we're going to show you a bolo today, too, something that I look for that has the same uh, opportunity to do. You can RA many, many, many different, there's hundreds and hundreds of RA items in the collectibles fields. I assure you, brand new items that you can RA from stores and shops. Um, GameStop has a bunch of them sometimes too. So that's just a, another example. I know people talk about Funko and things like that. I don't go that route because there's just not as much money to some extent uh, as there is for other items. I do have connections at places and still we have ties to people who work at Disney and things like that too. So we have some ins, but we're going to show you right now a bolo as well that's tied to this as well as a bolo that you should be looking for regardless of where you're at. So we're going to go over the screen right now. So here's just one tiny small area of RAing and collectibles that you can do. I just wanted to give you an example. This is something that I know people who personally do. I have personally sold these many times over and I've personally RA'd this exact item, getting 50, 60, 70 sets of some of these time and time again and selling them over and over and over again. Part of why this works as well on something like this, for example, or anything, People in other areas of the country that don't live near me can't get these items. There's a ton of collectors for these type of items. They've been around for 150 years, believe it or not. 
many coin collectors collect these as well too. There's coin holders for these, there's coin books, price guides, everything you can think of for coins. There are collectors and items for these type of elongated items as well too. They did other things besides pennies, but pennies are the one that's collected the most. Age-wise as well isn't a huge factor. This is new. This is from QuakeCon. This is the Fallout video game um, release of these. This is from one of the conventions or something. This person sold seven of them for 40 bucks a set. And he has two more left. There's people that probably have 50 and 60 of these possibly at this point. When I worked at Disney, I would get 50, 60, 70 sets of some of the elongated pennies that they had out of the machines there because they changed them out so often. And then they wouldn't make the same ones for very long to actually encourage people to actually buy a new one. So that was part of the, the, the stick for doing this type of thing. You could just create a different design every year. And then some of them were limited and they were harder to find. So we did this when we worked at Disney. We've done it in other places too. Don't do it so much nowadays. We don't have the need to. We do buy the vintage ones and flip those all the time though so it's not some scarcity there's tens of thousands of different varieties of these on the market as i said there is a price guide with pictures it's hundreds of pages if i'm not mistaken on it as well too here's a 2013 universal studios japan one 34 dollars We'll just give you some examples here to give you an idea. Here's a 1901 Pan American Expo. This is the type that I would be seeing and looking for. You find these in every antique mall I've ever been in has a bunch of these in it, every single one. I, I can't think of one time when I haven't seen some of these. It's few and far between the ones that are worth real high money because some of these can go up to $800, $900 for one of these. Again, 95% of them aren't worth much at all, aren't worth messing with. Average wise, if I get a new one that's like from some special event or something else, I usually can flip it and make a $10 profit to say $25 profit, depending on the item. Some I may only make six or eight bucks on too. So just keep that in consideration. When you made these, it costs you back then probably a quarter and they would crush a penny. Nowadays, I think it's like a dollar or a dollar fifty to get one of these pennies. And you have to supply the penny as well, too. So it's not just a penny item. It usually is money involved in actually having them pressed or stamped as well, too. Now, some of the conventions and things you go to, you don't put the money in. It's literally you supply the penny and it's smashed there. Some of those are worth a ton of money as well, too. This one's $39. Uh, next one here. This is a discontinued one, a perfect example. I've got a bunch of these right now, $39.99. I have friends that still work at Disney. I do have people that send me stuff quite often. You know, I'll send them, you know, a money order or something or yeah, PayPal them some money or something and they'll pick up some for me when I hear of a special event or something like that going on. And I have other friends who do it. I have some friends in the Universal Studios area. I've got some friends who work at certain places that I can get these at as well too. So this is just another area of something that I look for. Again, you're not going to make a fortune doing this type of item here, but you could add to your bottom line $500 to $1,000 a year if you hit it hard. You could add couple thousand dollars a year extra to the bottom line just from doing this or trying to find these on RA examples to do. It's just like anything else for RA. There's some good ones and there's some bad ones. So I'm pretty lucky enough to have some good contacts, but that's about all it takes to make some money on stuff like this. Again, this is just one example. So don't blow it off if this isn't something that somebody can do. There's tons of other things. Bobbleheads from local events, from ball games, baseball sports events. There's coffee mugs, the same thing that they do this for. They're all considered collectible and they're all something that you can RA, you can buy out a whole a store load of, you know, limited edition items that are hand signed and hand numbered, you know, and flip those at a later date. There's all kinds of things you can do with this. So let's just show you some more, give you an idea. 1912 Vanderbilt Cup race, $39. Sometimes they're hold like that last one where they put a hole in it to actually hang and suspend from the neck. The last one had some damage. It's still sold for that. 1934 uh, VFW. This is a very common thing. 50 bucks on this one. The older is not always the, the, the higher dollar one when you're out looking for these as well, too. Sometimes the newer ones are hard to get. $42, 1912, uh, Wilmington, uh, let's see, Old Home Week is what this one was. And most towns had an Old Home Week and still do in some areas. Ours does, actually. Here's a 2019 Disneyland set, $51. So they basically have $7.50 probably invested in this, $7.50. They're flipping it for $51. So they're making 
roughly $38, somewhere in that price range, I would gather, you know. And again, you could have a dozen sets of these. You could have 50 sets of these. Sell them one at a time if that's the case in something like this. 50 bucks, six bidders. They threw them in a regular envelope. These you can tape down to a index card and put them in a regular envelope if that's what you wish to do. I don't do it that way, but I know many people that do. Um, out of the people that I deal with and talk to directly who do what we do, the majority of them mess with these or find them occasionally, and they'll find them and flip them as well, too. I know friends who've walked up and bought bunches, hundreds and hundreds of these at auctions, and were able to pull out some real good ones out of those auctions and flip those and make an incredible amount of money off of just these type of items. So, and Next one, though, is a 1939 World's Fair, $56 and some change. Next one here, 1945, Navy, it looks like uh, Navy Day. Our town still has Navy Day, so they're actually produced pennies for our event here in town too as well. So $77. Next one here is a very rare one. This is an Allentown one. Again, there's a price guide for these with identification and scarcity in the whole works. This one went for $416. The max you're going to expect to get out of one of these is eight or nine hundred dollars, in all honesty. But again, 90, 95 percent of everyone you find is not going to be worth that much money. So they can sell in lots for you know pennies a piece, you know literally. So just be careful on stuff, whatever you buy. But these I always look for always. So 131 on this one, it's a William Bryan. Uh, now he ran um, for president actually at one point too. Next one here is 100th anniversary of New Orleans. It's a steamboat, first steamboat on the river, the Ohio River. $115, 18 bids. And the last one here, this is an Ohio one from the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, it's got the garden wolves on it. I've seen this one before. Somebody bought it straight out at $65. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. The, the idea is not to just sell this type of thing. Yes, look for this this type of item. Look for these elongated coins. But the idea is that you can do this in RA, a flip, quick flip. You can buy them in quantity. These items you can sell on Amazon, believe it or not, and they do sell on Amazon. There is a whole coin section on Amazon, believe it or not, and it's well looked through by coin collectors. A coin collector or somebody who collects this is looking for that oddity. They don't care where they find it at. Like I've said in the past, Amazon is a good source to sell some certain types of collectibles. We sell 78 records better on Amazon than we do anywhere else, and they sell for a higher amount as well. So this type of thing can sell across the gamut. There's at least four different sites you can cross-list these type of items at, and they will sell. Again, look them up yourself. There's tens of thousands of them for sale at any given time. There's a bunch that sell for a real decent amount of money, so just keep your eyes opened on these. Well, there you go. There's some other items that we look for, some other thoughts and ideas on what we do. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.